let's go. So, thought, one of the key things that everybody's saying, and um, I do want this to be a little bit interactive, um, I haven't done any slides for it, is that um, they want to sign more distributors or, you know, they just want to sign distributors. It's basically what everybody always says. Um, and so I just thought, okay, let's have a little think about what I... Look at Neil, I'm recording. Oh, it's slow motion, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh god it's not the children so i thought we'll go over um what basically i think i see from people who are regularly signing distributors so um i shared with you a couple of statistics with regards to um and emma orchard was um I didn't do it for the whole team, um, so I don't know if she was the highest, but looking down the list, you obviously, so when you're looking down at how many people have been sponsored, uh, it definitely looked like hers was the longest list, to be fair. So I um, started to think, you know, well, what exactly, you know, what, what, is, what is Emma doing? You know, what do I see that Emma's doing? Um, and I think one of the, obviously, one of the key things is the consistency on social media. And I do sort of feel like we talk about this all the time. Um, but, you know, that, that, is, that is a huge part of Emma's business. Um, I know that when Sven talks about how um, he sees, an, you know, a potential over-reliance upon social media um, within network marketing these days. Um, so when we do any leadership calls, Emma always talks about how what she will do is, is she won't necessarily find all of the people that she's talking to on Facebook. But what she will do is, is the minute that she's found them, you know, so if she's met them at an event or she's met them blitzing or she's done, air, you know, anywhere that she's she's found these people, they get put on her Facebook because she feels that's a way that they can really get to know her, get to see what the business does. Um, and I think, you know, that, that, is a, that is very much what I do as well. So even though I don't rely on, you know, social media with regards to meeting people, um, because face to face is so much more powerful. Um, once you've met them, if you've got them on there, then that's the time for them to see what it's all about. Um, so, you know, if you think about, you know, the triple diamonds in the UK, then um, if you look at Emma Orchard's, Leon Fantini's, uh, mine, or, you know, Sarah Fire or Claire Williams, if you look at their timelines, one thing you will see is that they do talk about their business, you know, every day. Um, and sometimes you can think to yourself, well, what am I going to talk about every single day? Um, there's so many different things that you can talk about. So um, you'll see them talking about their love for their team. You'll see them talking um, about their team and the time they've spent with them, whether that be on like training calls like tonight or meeting up for coffees or um, going out for dinner or the friendships that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's really important that um, you don't just talk about, you know, the, your team as a because you know they, that's not what they become your team become your friends and they become an integral part of your life they talk they are the people that you will speak to most days um whether that be on messenger or you know on the phone you know these people become really really you know you become really close to them um and that's something that's really nice when you can portray that across um you know on social media so you've got, um, you know, the support. Now, support can be from your uplines, downlines, sidelines, anywhere, whether it be corporate, 
um, you know, as well, wherever that support is coming from, shout about it. Because if somebody's watching you with your business, thinking to themselves, well, it's all very well and good, but she's only been doing it for a month. Um, maybe, you know, does she, does she know everything? Um, and, and you will do, you know, that, that's no reflection on you, but some people might think that. If you talk about the fact that you've got this person helping you or that person helping you or that you work together as a team, immediately it alleviates those fears and people realize that there's a whole team of people. And even though you might have only been doing it for two days, um, there's a lot of other people that have been doing it for longer that can help. So talk about the support, the support that you can offer, the support that's available to the team. Um, and, um, you know, what the business can do. Now, the business can do all types of different things. So there's very different things to talk about. You can talk about the business, uh, what it's doing for you, as in um, the friendships that it's bringing. It doesn't have to be monetary, okay? You know, the um, confidence that it's giving you. Um, it might be that it's something that you just wanted to do for yourself. It might be something that for the future it's giving you hope. Um, no. Um, it might be something that the business, um, what you want it to do for the future. It can also be what the business has done for other people, okay? So you can share your upline story, you can share my story, you can share other people in the UK story. Um, if you're following Pam Slowder, she's always um, talking about the different um, distributors and their stories. And frequently you'll see something and you think, wow, look at that story. It's amazing how somebody's gone from, you know, it might be that it's a single mum of however many children that's doing it on their own, or it might be somebody that was really poor, or it could be somebody who's a student you know, there's so many different stories out there. And obviously, the more that you share, the more you're going to have somebody that could go, do you know what, I can relate to that. Um, I can relate to that story. So, um, yeah, so what the business can do, you'll see is regular that. Um, and it's, it's a general, obviously, excitement. Um, and, I, you know, don't get me wrong. There are days that I am not as excited as others. Um, my Facebook probably won't ever really show that to you. Um, if you talk to me, I will tell you. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't pull the wool over your eyes in that way. But um, as far as my Facebook is concerned, then there is a positivity constantly on there. Um, I might throw in the odd frustration with regards to if the kids are playing up, or you know other other things in life um but wouldn't ever be in a too negative way it would only ever be in a way that somebody could relate to that and go you know because you don't want to look like you've got too perfect a life because everybody has down days and you're not going to look real but um you know, just make sure that those frustrations are things that aren't um something that would put somebody off wanting to work with you so examples could be um if you fell out with somebody a friend or whatever you wouldn't want to necessarily share that okay um you wouldn't necessarily want to share that you've had and i've seen this is that you've you've had an, an argument with somebody about tax credits on the phone um you know there's just certain things that could give a negative connotation that you won't want to put across. So strip those out, but still be real and just and just stick to the positivity. Um, also things that we talk about is we talk about the people that we've wrapped, the people that we're wrapping, the people that are using our products, how excited we are to get hear, hear from our customers. Um, we obviously talk about the products, our love for them, our customers' love for them. Um, factual information about them, um, information about how they can get them at cost price. And obviously there's all nice little ways you'll see us posting about, you know, 90 day challenges or um, would you like to wrap at our cost price? All of those different things. 
Um, and you've got, goodness me, you've got a whole skincare range. You've got the wraps, you've got the definer gel, you've got the greens, wow, you know, um, hair, skin and nails. So with regards to products, um, even if you talked about only one product each day, that, that's well over a week's worth of stuff. Um, so you don't feel like you have to be repetitive or boring about it. You know, I've got, um, if I post in my group about hair, skin and nails, I'll post on my wall about um, wraps, for example, and then I'd probably post on my business page about, um, you know, the wow or something. So I'll try and mix it up as well with regards to what I'm doing so that, you know, it, it is different across there, but you've got loads of different things. Um, and obviously, scary territory, but live videos or just videos are hugely important. Um, that you know, you can usually guarantee that if you've done some sort of live video or a video. Even if you're talking about the business, even if you're talking about promotion, it doesn't matter what you're talking about, people will, it will remind people that you do other things. So I can put a thing on about, you know, oh, how much I love the business and how it, you know, it works around the kids and get a message about a wrap. And that is basically because you've reminded people They've seen you, they've seen your excitement, they've seen your genuineness, um, and it just reminds them. Um, happens all the time. I'll post something about hair, skin and nails, I'll get a wow inquiry. It's just, as long as you're mixing it up all the time, you'll get those things. So that is crucial, obviously, is that your Facebook is a really positive, you know, upbeat place to be that is consistent. Um, and when we say consistent, it is every day. It really is every day. So if you miss, um, if you post like six things in one day and then nothing for the rest of the week, that is not going to do the same job as you posting something every day. Because network marketing is obviously, you know, and with any business to be honest, but people, um, you know, they lose interest in their business or they might leave their business. And if you're not posting every day, people think that's you. They think um, they, want, they want to say before they will join you or before they will buy from you, they want to see that you are serious about it. Um, and you really do have to prove to people that you're serious about it because people flit a lot with these sorts of products and businesses. So if they see you posting a bit here and then not for a bit and then a bit here and not for a bit, you know, I know I've had people um, who have, and this is with other network marketing businesses. So one girl who came to us after doing another one um, said that somebody has joined somebody else's team just because she hasn't posted for a couple of weeks. They didn't even, they didn't message her and say, are you doing it any longer? They just signed up with somebody else. Um, because, you know, and the reality is, if, you, if you're not consistent, if you're in a scattergun approach, then actually you could be helping somebody else because they're going to see you do that get a bit of an interest for the business and then they might see somebody else posting all the time and you know you, you don't want that you really don't want that um so yeah so every single day um and you know it can be anything it can be any of those things so you've got a whole host of things to talk about um if you watch me copy me it's not a problem at all we've got different friends um you might see the picture and think, oh, I like that picture. I can put different words with it. You might see the words and want to put a different picture with it. You might want to put both exactly the same to begin with. Um, your confidence will grow and you'll start seeing other people posting stuff. And all of a sudden, you'll start seeing, um, once you start looking for things, you'll start seeing the motivational pics, the good morning pics, and the, you know, um, all those nice positivity things and you'll start to save them into your phone so when you see it just save it 
and you might not post it straight away because obviously if you're friends with the person you don't want them to think that you've just directly copied it um or what you might do is is what i would do is i would save it and then post it on my instagram so um it's a different audience seeing it you've used it and then you've got it and then you might use it on your facebook in the next few days but once you start to look for it you'll get a back backup of things to do um and as i say you know whoever's whoever's your upline i can 100 percent guarantee if you are following them and you see stuff that that you like use their stuff um so we've got this consistency we've got people you know seeing it the next thing is is obviously you know we want more people to see you um now constantly adding new people to your network is crucial now this again you know this isn't just about social media um this is about you know if you've got the opportunity to go to a pamper night to go to a beauty show to go to a ladies night or a school fair um if you just put in petrol in hand over a blitz card all of the time that is adding new people you're meeting new people you know you're going to get their email or their phone number um you know if they're, if they're interested and the easiest thing in the world is, you know, to say, are you on Facebook or Instagram and get them to follow you? Because the minute you've got them on there, they're going to be seeing what you're doing regularly. So it's not necessarily that that's the only way that you build your network, um, but it is a really easy way to keep in touch with them and for them to see exactly what it is. But everybody I meet, pretty much yeah pretty much every single person you know if there's a new person that i meet i hand them a card and they look a little bit interested because the majority of my profile is public i say to them have a little nosy add me as a friend if you'd like to but just have a little look have a little look at what i do have a little look at who i am um so yeah so constantly adding new people to your network we are in the key is in the phrase we're in network marketing so we need to network, increase our network, and we need to market ourselves. That's it. it. You know, it really is that simple. Next thing is um, become a professional asker. Okay. So um, you're chatting to somebody and they say, I would love to try the rap, but I haven't got enough money. Have you ever thought of this as a business? Okay, and you'll find your own little way. And if you're struggling with that, then we've got scripts that can help with it. You know, but the minute somebody says they haven't got enough money, for me, they've gone from a customer to a potential distributor immediately. Immediately, they are a potential distributor. Um, and I will start talking to them about, you know, well, how would you feel if you could earn a bit of extra money and actually use the products for free? Um, because I can tell you that I, you know, wow, I use that for free because I retail it, I make money, and the other sachets I use them. That you know, that that's me sorted. I use wow for free. It's amazing. Um, even the wraps, to be fair, the wraps this month I am using for free because um, the retail sales that I did to get Neil's Emerald, I bought extra wraps. Um, but because I'd already done the retail sales, those wraps were paid for. So I could either sell them and make extra money on them, which I will do some of them. Um, but I'm going on holiday. So I'm going to use a box. I'm going to be able to do a full treatment and it's not cost me anything because I've bought them as a retail through the retail sales. Um, so come on, if you see somebody on facebook and they're really good and they're really nice person and they're bouncy and they're friendly um ask them say you know i i really like your profile and this is this is really good um if you've got a salon on your profile or you've you know salons locally ask them um you will see you will see statuses of people you know saying and this is going to be in particular over the summer period 
you will have a lot of obviously mums who are going to have children going to school for the first time or um, and who are either going to have a little bit of extra time or you're going to have mums whose children are going to school for the first time who work full time and I can say I've got two children who, you know, one at school, one at preschool. Charlie's going up to junior school. Lou is going into, into preschool uh, reception in September. And um, this, these last two weeks of term, I was just chatting to my friend who works um, for a local football club. The last two weeks are a nightmare. You've got um, Louis going in for graduation so I had two graduations I've got Charlie going to Agile for lunch I've got um, the brew house production tomorrow so Charlie's got in a little show um, I've got sports day next week for Charlie I've got a leave-in assembly for Charlie on Friday of this week I get to walk Louis to his classroom and go into his classroom to settle him in um, these are all things that, if you are working full time, put an immense amount of pressure on working parents. Um, I genuinely really do feel for so many of my friends who have to really struggle to make these things. Um, and they're either having to organize working from home. Um, and let me tell you, work, if you're having to book a day's holiday, and you turned up to Louis's graduation ceremony and it was 10 minutes long. <laughs> it was beautiful, the most amazing singing, but it was 10 minutes long. So there will be people that have had to take a whole day's holiday to go to a graduation ceremony the last 10 minutes. It's, and, and this is constant with school, absolutely constant. And you don't want to be not working because the amount it costs for everything, um, our school in particular, is amazing at providing stuff for the children, but there isn't a week that doesn't go by when they're not asking for some sort of money from us. So um, that's going to be you coming into a period where people are going to be very, very aware of that. Ask them if they're interested. You know, ask them, are you interested in being having the opportunity to be able to stay at home, having the opportunity to be able to, you know, do this or do that. Um, it is really important to ask. Um, Julie, who we've got on the call, Julie Burrows, asked Fiona Reeves about joining the business when she first started. So Fee joined us, amazing. Julie didn't ask her own sister, so it took a year for Nikki to join the business. So Julie, who is amazing at asking people, is also a great example of somebody who, now Nikki, it's actually the right time for her now. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, but it's just really interesting how you don't ask people. When I first started, um, <laughs> bless her, she's smiling. When I first started, um, one of my friends had just started um, doing beauty courses. I didn't ask her. She actually turned to me, we were going to an event, and she said, do you want me to do it with you? And I said, well, of course I'd love you to do it with me. Why? And she went, because you, well, you haven't asked me. And I was like, oh my God, no, I haven't. I haven't actually asked if you want to do it. Um, and, you know, we all have people who were more nervous about doing that. So the reason I probably didn't ask her is because I didn't want her to put her under pressure to think that she had to do it. Um, but I'd say just work on that because there's ways around it and there's ways that you can ask people um, without putting pressure on them. And there's, you know, there's ways that you can phrase messages um, so people know that you want them to be involved but doesn't mean that you feel uncomfortable. So um, next one, next key thing with distributors, and we've been chatting about this in a little chat, um, is follow-ups. Okay. Um, 
follow-ups tend to be a bit of an organisational nightmare, to be honest. Um, and most people say at some point, I'm struggling to keep up with my follow-ups. And the reason I think I find this is that I will have somebody who I followed up with and they said, well, give me a call. And then they don't answer the phone and then I have to write it down again to remember again. And then they might have said, ring me at four o'clock. And then unless I've put an alarm on my phone, the kids have done something. And I'm like, oh God, it's five, you know, it's like six o'clock at night now. Have I missed that slot with that person? Um, but um, follow-ups are absolutely crucial. And the fortune is in the follow-ups. And what I'd say is, is don't be afraid, you know, to be ignored by people because they will ignore you for quite a while. Um, but, you know, message them. There's offers that you can send them messages about. Uh, we've got an opportunity call tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to be doing, as soon as I finish this call, that's my job, is I'm going to message all of the people. Um, doesn't matter whether I only spoke to them yesterday or not. I'm going to message everybody and say, just to let you know, uh, we're having a little chat going over some of the stuff in the business, here's the link, would be great if you fancied listening in to see what things are about. You know, try and keep it informal and chatty. Um, online parties, so we always have the online parties. They're a great way of um, inviting people um, because it doesn't feel like you, you, you're hassling them too much. You know, I invite all of my prospects to the online parties every fortnight. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, they might come on. Sometimes they might just be watching. Um, sometimes they'll speak up. Um, I've got a girl that I'm speaking to at the moment. She's supposed to be getting back to me about um, getting a few people together so I can go over and we can talk about the products because she said that people are saying to her that it's a water loss wrap. And I said, look, why don't you just, I mean, she's in Manchester, so it'd be, a right, it'd be a fair trek. But I've been speaking to her for quite a while now. And I just I just want to sort it. Um, so I said, right, just get people in a room. She's, she's got a little salon. So I said, right, get the people in. I'll come over. We'll speak to them. And then we'll know once and for all, you know, what, what's going to happen there. Um, so... But she was on one of the online parties recently and popped back up again with her interest. Um, because a lot of the time, what's the beauty of the online parties is, is that you might add somebody and they're thinking, well, she's bound to say it's amazing because she wants me to join her team. And this can be your friend. It can be someone you've just met. It can be anybody. You know, but when those people see other people who have no benefit whatsoever to them joining um being positive about the business and if they ask a question they will often you know they'll often get answered by people other than than yourself and um they they see that you it's not just you you're not the only crazy one thinking these wraps and this business are amazing there are actually quite a few people who actually think and there's actually quite a few people who are doing quite well from it. So it starts to, and you know, and it might not be the first online party that they come on that that registers. They might need to come on a few. So keep inviting them, basically. Um, other things is, um, you know, so you might be messaging them. What we also have is we have what we, we call our top 20 hit list. So that is 20 people who you think would either be amazing at the business or they've expressed an interest in the business uh, uh, or you you know you think that, that you know there's an opportunity there for them to work it basically and what you're going to do is um, if you've got them as your see first on Facebook so you click on their profile and it comes up see first you go on that and you're going to be commenting and liking on the stuff that they pop up so there's two reasons for that. One, it puts you top of mind, so they remember that you exist. The second thing is, is how Facebook algorithm works is, if you are connecting with them and interacting with them, 
then Facebook is going to be more likely to show them what you post. So when you post about how you're excited about your business or this amazing product that you've got, then they're going to be more likely to see that. So it just means that, you know, subconsciously, you, you know, you're speaking to them about what you're doing. So, yeah, so follow-ups isn't just about directly sending a message or a text message or an email. It's about communicating with them about offers, communicating with them and building a relationship with regards to what they're posting on social media, um, you know, inviting them to the online parties, all those different things are follow-ups. And all working together, you will then start to see, you know, reap the benefits of that. So um, another thing that I use with regards to, you know, distributors and follow-ups and keeping in contact with people is something called MailChimp, which is an email provider. Um, I'm not sure what I think about this at the moment. Um, I have to admit I've taken my eye off the ball a little bit with that. I'm going to pick it up again um, because a couple of years ago I used to get, well, yeah, yeah, no, a couple of years ago, I used to get regularly, if I sent out a MailChimp, which is basically an email, but it's sent out in a nice format that looks like professional, um, I could guarantee that I would get some sort of inquiry. Uh, now, that might not come to anything, but it would either be inquiry about the business or the wraps or, you know, or the products or, you know, something. I, I don't tend to get that so much now. And I do think the email is dying out um, as a communication method. Um, but I'm going to keep you posted on that one because I am going to pick it back up again because I do think that, you know, I've got like 800 people in a mailing list. So I really need to be speaking to those people. Uh, I don't know about any... Oh, does somebody have, to have something to add there? Oh, no. um, text, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I don't really use text. Very rarely do I text people now. I tend to use more Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or something like that. Um, but picking up the phone or face to face are obviously, you know, the most powerful no. thing you can do. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say the sorry to button the text thing. Yeah. The, when I've been using that now, is any events that I've been to, and you want to try and get everyone's contact details that rather than getting an email you know like maybe getting them to fill out to win a free wrap or something I've been using raffle tickets and doing a free wrap yeah they, like win a wrap and all they need to do is write their name and their mobile number on the back oh. of the ticket not their email, because we did that at the beauty show and everything, and I felt that's not worked. But I've had a much bigger response. Ah. Than just getting, and it's easy to get their name and their mobile number, because then you tell them that you're going to text them to let them know if they've won. Yeah. And you can get 40, 50 people, whoever you're blitzing, on the day, at any family days, in like that, get, yeah. name, get their mobile number and then that's your contact and that's better than an email so yeah. although you're saying I prefer messenger as well but random interest that you meet in these events you're not going to get them on Facebook so you need to get them some way so it's either email or yeah. text but I well, get a much bigger response as well to the text is once you've got their name in your contacts their yeah. name and number in your contacts they will come up as suggested friends on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a great way. It, so it is. does work getting that. The, yeah. the texts do work. For me personally, I've found the texts are way better than an email. Yeah, I think email is definitely dying um, as a communication method. Um, I just no, don't... I don't mind. Um, you got so... Sorry. Oh, <laughs> on, Louise. 
I've done something similar where I use like little slips um, where they put on like their name, their number, their email, their address. And there's like ticky boxes at the bottom. I don't know if you've used them well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested. I've got friends that might be interested. I'm interested in the party. I'm interested in the business. And I had to tick at least one of those to be entered into the rap draw. And I must have 50 plus. I texted every single one of them saying, oh, you didn't win the free rap, but like, you know, you've won a party or you've won a discount or whatever. And not one person replied. (laughs) Really? So can I ask, like, what do you say in your text messages? When I've texted them originally, well, if I'm texting everybody who hasn't won, I've really just said, unfortunately, this time, you've not been lucky with the rap. I always write on the back of the ticket what they've been interested in. Yeah. So I always have their name. I always have their mobile number. And I always have something written when they're walking away as to whether they could be a potential loyal, whether they could be a potential DT, or what product. Yeah. So if I, if I had them written down as a, she would be good as a DT, then I would direct more that way towards her. And the same, if it was just a loyal or whatever, I would go up to them saying, I've got a great special offer on at the moment for mm. a trial on hair, skin, nails, or whatever. And do you, and do you message them further down the line as well? So like... Would you maybe well, message do. them later and say, oh, I've got an offer on, blah, blah, blah. Could do. Yeah, yeah. so I suppose that's the whole trap we all fall into at the moment when <laughs> we're not you... blowing up as much as she should be doing. Yeah, you know. Fiona, that's how Tracy got me. Yeah. That raffle at the... Ah, uh, <laughs> that's brilliant. The Edinburgh <laughs> show. That's her, I and she go. just kept texting me and catch it. Not necessarily text me about the business, but like every few days she would text me and say, "Hi, Han, how are you? How's the baby?" Just like actual conversation with an adult because I was stuck with Elijah all day every day. <laughs> yeah. And then she would go on about the business a little bit. Um, and the more she did that, the more I got interested, and that was how actually it worked yeah. for me. So. It yeah. does work in some well, cases. Yeah. <laughs> and look, now we're lucky to have you on our team. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just shows you though, but had that been an email, you probably, yeah. it's much easier to ignore because I know yeah. I've got how many emails just sitting there that I've not even looked at. Yeah. So yeah, it just shows you, I think text wise with the phones, it's your much more likely to get well I, I think anyway because it's much more personal than the email yeah so. Charlene did you ignore any of our texts not at all <laughs> <laughs> no because I know she's not on the call um, but no <laughs> no because um she always asked how I was how my day she seemed always really interested in my personal life as well mm-hmm. and that kept me yeah. interested in her because she seems, she, I always call her lovely lady, because to me she is such a lovely lady. And yeah. Like, hey, hey, lovely lady. So, because she was, she was genuinely, it seems she was always genuinely interested in my life first. And then we could go on and discuss um, raps and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's really good to know though, isn't it? Because it was really, I mean, Tracy is genuinely a lovely lady and she would yeah. have been genuinely <laughs> interested in your family life. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm always keen to say to people, don't, you can't fake that, you know, yeah. so, um, and, and that is, you know, if, you, if you're talking to people about their life and everything, then it is because you're genuinely interested. Um, but she was she was obviously texting you quite regularly then. Yeah, regularly. If not every two days, every three days. Not every day, unless it was like a conversation that we hadn't yeah. finished or I hadn't replied because I had to go tend to Elijah or something like that. Um, or she was flying in between. Um, but no, it was, she was regular. She kept on top of me until I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blah. do you know why? 
you know why? Because I can I, I can remember speaking to Tracy about this, and Tracy had such a genuine desire to help you. Yeah. Dad, you know, because she'd got to know you and got to know your circumstances, um, mm. she really was like, I so want to help Charlotte. Yeah. That's what she kept saying to me as well. Mm. Um, but so, see, nowadays, you just don't think there's people like that out there that no. genuinely just want to help you and not necessarily receive anything back. Yeah. You know? So it's rare. It is rare. <laughs> It is yeah. rare, but it does exist. It does um, exist. Tracy is a um, natural giver. Yeah. She, yeah. she loves to give, and that that's, doesn't matter whether it's our family or our friends or whatever. She's an absolute blessing to me mm. um, and a pleasure. And it makes me want to help her too, you know. Yeah. I want to see her now succeed, and you guys as well underneath, you know. It's, that's what it's all about, really. So that's nice. But that's cool. cool. No, it is. It's really good, that is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I suppose, this, and this is a good conversation to have. So the reality is, is that, um, I don't want to take this the wrong way, Charlene, but Tracy's interaction with you would have been quite time consuming. Yeah. Definitely. She would have been very focused with regards to, I'm going to help Charlene. Yeah. Um, and I know the amount of people I've got to text or message, and I know, I know Louise, I know loads of people be in the same position. And I'm just thinking, do we just then go, well, you know what, actually, we're not going to be able to speak to all 100 leads that we've got at this moment in time but there's this person this person this person this person that i really genuinely feel i can help and do i go right okay well i'm going to give them a week of real focused time and then if at the end of it we don't feel like we've got anything going that's fine well what do you think what do you think, Faye? Is that what we're doing anyway? Um, yeah, I think um, I think if I found anything, I think that people will do it when they're ready. You know, Charlotte yeah. is probably watching Tracy and, and for us to maybe say, well, we're ready to concentrate on them. Like, you know, I, I'm trying to get, you know, two or three rubies this month in the team and and I'm ready for it and I'm ready for them to join. But I know personally that, you know, um, we're, we're already in our first two weeks of our summer holidays here. And I know most of my potential duties aren't kind of about this fortnight, but they might be about the, the last two weeks in July, you know. So I think it's maybe just a case of them... Um, I think it's just a case of each each case on their own merit, you know. It's, yeah. It's like, it just depends, and they'll do it when they are ready, you know. Like I've just, I'm meeting a girl tomorrow, who, a month ago, I got given a lead saying you need to speak to her. She would be, you know, she might be interested, and I went to her. She was in the exact same place where you are right now. She was two weeks away from the holidays, stressed out to the max, holiday coming up. She was moving house and it just wasn't her um, time. And she instantly came back to me and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah sounds good, but um, it's already not for me right now. Um, too busy, holidays, end of school, da, 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 da. And I put that post on today about the... the um, Yes. People, you know, the millionaire thing. Yeah, you must, and you know, within five minutes, she instantly just texts back and she was just like, okay then, so can I fit this in? How much time am I going to need to do this? So her situation from four weeks ago, which I would have put, I had her on a list of, well, that's a potential and she'll be watching and a, 
added her in the groups and even though it wasn't her time last month um she's come round on her own you know so yeah so there are certain people that i think need a push yeah i suppose my point is i'm I'm just trying to think of like because what can happen is is if you have and I think a lot of us have got this feeling at the moment if you feel overwhelmed with the amount of people that you've got to follow up with then you can get that it can paralyze you so I know I think that's where I am to a certain extent where I'm I feel paralyzed by because I'm overwhelmed and therefore I'm not actually speaking to anybody yeah, and would I be just at your going, yeah I'm, I'm literally just sat there going who who what am I doing who am I speaking to what must be and where whereas if I just said do you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat myself up if I don't speak to that list of people but I am going to make sure that I've you know, and if I send the messages out and some of them ignore me or, you know, some of them get a conversation going and, you know, maybe if they all ignore me, then I move on to the next set of people. But then if I move on to the next set of people and some of those people start to talk to me, I need to then not be beating myself up about the fact that there's another list of people I'm still not conversing with, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Because that's where I've got to. Because I do think that what I do is, is I spread myself so thin that then if I had somebody like Charlene, I probably would miss it because I've spread myself so thin that I, would, I would, wouldn't get that conversation going and that momentum going. Yeah. Hmm. Being too hard on yourself. Mm. Well, I think that I, comes down to... I think it comes down to um, good planning and organisation. Yeah. I think that I've not got that. <laughs> no, not a lot of us have. I am a right list maker, but I'm the first one that will say to everyone, you know, I, I see my husband walking around and I can see there's a hundred things on his mind, but he doesn't know what to do first. And I'm a big mm. one to say, write it down. And I think sometimes, like, you know, you know, even just like this morning, I feel, I, you get to that point where you know you've got people to speak to or and you've got things coming up the next week and you want to get things organised. Sometimes it's really good just to write down those different lists. So today I wrote down, I refreshed and wrote down my new up-to-date potential loyals, up-to-date potential DTs, um, what I had to do work-wise this week um, or wanting to achieve who I wanted to speak to, but also your home side of it as well. What is it I have to do in the house? So I have like those four different lists and then and then I'm able to prioritize from then and then just start kind of chipping away at it and say, so you do feel a bit better, you know, especially if you um, allow yourself time to do it and you're, you're, you're um, managing your time. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you sit there and instead of watching Housewives like I normally do, then I'll <laughs> sit down and I'll, I'll say, right, I'm going to spend the whole afternoon now and I need to get into this list and I need to do that and try and get rid of as much as... I can, you know, and so I, I do think the planning and organisation side of it helps. Um, yeah. Yeah, you see, what I tend to do is I just tend to write too many lists and then I'm just procrastinating and all I'm yeah. doing is actually writing lists. Yeah, but then you need to write another list. So you need to take those pieces of paper and then write a couple of big lists. And that's, what I do. that's what I do. <laughs> all day as well <laughs> but it does work it does work yeah i've got a great list i have a list of long lists of things that need to be done and then i have a what i want to get done that very day list yeah so you pick pick things out that list that need but to i'm crap done. at getting the things on that list done because then something else crops up and then i yeah that's life though i've got to stop procrastinating basically 
Yeah. It might sound silly, but what about like rewarding yourself, even if it's something really little? So if you do something off that list, have a drink. <laughs> Yay! Yay! You know, Yay. That that like, that's a great idea. <laughs> like one, like you know the the consistency like on social media. Yeah. For me, I thought with a baby, I thought it was just not gonna work but what I've done is you do find it during a day you always do get a chance to go on Facebook no matter what happens no matter what's going on you do at some point you always get a chance to go on so my reward was <laughs> and it will sound silly but I'm not allowed to look at anything else on Facebook until I've posted on my business page oh, once I've posted I then I can you know so it sounds silly but it does work because I, I think to myself oh well I can't do that yet because I haven't posted so and as soon as I post I know I can then go and scroll and look and message blah 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 so it does work <laughs> yeah it does actually and do you know what I do actually do that a little bit myself first thing in the morning yeah. so first thing in the morning um my reward is my shower I'm like yeah. right <laughs> I cannot get into the shower until I've posted on my personal page, my business page, my group, and Instagram. Yeah, exactly. It means the kids are late from school a lot. <laughs> They're not late. They're not late. They always get there on time, but, uh, you know, they are literally walking in. <laughs> so I, I need to work that one out a little bit better, but... Yeah, it's a good idea. I like the idea of a drink. I'm not sure that would work at 10 o'clock in the morning. What do you think? No, you would have to, for your drink, you would have to add up all your lists <laughs> to get your it's drink at night. It's always a, it's always five o'clock somewhere. That's what I said to my mum. Yeah. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> it is it's a good she's one in, it's she's good in one. california and she's eating her breakfast and i was sitting there eating my lasagna with my wine and she's like oh my god she went you've got lasagna and wine and i've just got my cereal and i'm going like that's five o'clock somewhere and mama was like there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh bless um right where was i i've gone to my to-do list so that was it that was it really that's everything. I think we've got some great tips there. Thank you for your input. Mel, do you um, pay for your meal, meal trim? No. This is a free one. Yeah, I know it's the free one. Mel, you were saying earlier about emails, and I totally agree that people are not really looking at them. I've even emailed two people to say they've won raps in competitions, uh, well, raffles, and they've not even bothered to reply. No, doesn't surprise me. It's crazy. Yeah, although I don't know about anybody else, but I hardly read my emails. I scan mine as regards who's who sent what to me and then decide whether i'm looking at it or not mm -hmm. emails can get really lost easily with me mm. very easily so i think um I, yeah i think the communication is just changing definitely has anyone tried doing video messages yet Ooh. What, as in, Ooh. on facebook what as in send somebody a video message yeah I've only just got my friends to do vo those little voice message things. I haven't tried any yet. <laughs> I'm just wondering if anyone else has. What, so you can send a video message? Yeah, they've just brought it out not long ago. I don't think, I don't know if I've got that. I'm going to have to look, sorry, while you're on it. Because <laughs> we were saying, you know, how the algorithms are changing. Oh, uh, um, my... If you and paste um, your message to too many people you might get flagged but we're well, thinking if you do a video message they don't know what's in that video message so yeah mm. so Aaron's just telling me that um, she's listening and the call here and she's saying you might find you need to do the latest update to get that on your phone mail ah come out so for my head but that's what in the background 
Although I'm thinking, do they mean that so you can pre record a little video and send it? Yeah. Which you can do that anyway, can't you? Because you can send a video in a message. Hmm. But it's yeah. only a short one, isn't it? I think it's up to a minute. Yeah. Are you talking oh. about like just a verbal message though, Mel? Like what do they no, all do on so better you know, together and that? So if you went on to your you know, like you'd do a little video, so you would video yourself speaking. Yeah. So you could go, Hi, it's Mel, just wondering how you were getting on um with the wraps and if you were still interested in being a loyal customer, for example. Yeah video and then you send that in a message so like you could send somebody a photo you can send them a video oh i wonder how that would work that sounds good well like louise was saying what you can do is is so you can do a video and obviously you won't be able to say their name if you wanted to use yes. it with lots of people but you could are you doing it now no, it's like you would just hold it to record it. Oh, I'm with you. I'm not. Get, where, where are you? Are you in <laughs> Messenger then? Or, well, yeah, yeah so you know when you go into Messenger and you go yeah. in and it says you, you can take a photo <laughs> in Messenger. Yeah. Yeah. If you okay. hold it down. Video. Oh, there you go. See, I'm sending you a video. Oh, yeah. Right, I've sent. Oh. Right, there you go. I've tried it. I've sent it. Yeah. <laughs> I've missed a call from Dawn. You've pressed the wrong button, Dawn, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, lady. I'm connected. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh you, yeah, you're definitely trying to call me. Oh, there you go. That's quite good, actually. I quite that's like good, that. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we could get in a lot of trouble with this one, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, that is good. I do like that. Hmm. So yes. So also, what that means is, is that if you. If you're sending, like, say, for example, it's coming up to end of month and you send in everybody in your friends list a message saying who wants to buy a wrap today, um, Facebook won't know that you're sending the same message to 20 million people, will they? Yeah. So you'll beat their algorithm. Hey. And avoid Facebook jail, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool that's a great idea mm -hmm. i like that we just need to come out up with something really quirky then eh? because that would be so new none of my i've never had one of them so that would be really cool to receive mm -hmm. a message like that if yeah. you're like brave enough you could do like a total jokey video couldn't you like <laughs> know, where you're like hiding behind a box of wraps or something and then you pop out <laughs> it's like do you know what i mean just so you're not yeah. just there like saying something but yeah do you know what as well how so you could um so you know like we're, we're adding people now to facebook so we could send them a message saying like you know what i was saying about the adding them to the group but you could send them a little video message saying thank you so much really excited to get to know you better and you know see what's cracking off in your life on facebook just to let you know um i've got a group for a business that i do and i'm going to pop you in it um if you've got an issue with that not a problem just let me know because when you do that on a video how many people are going to come back and say no <laughs> when you've gonna, bared your soul to them they'll get to see what you're like so they know yeah. what you're like they know like you know exactly what you look like because i mean i don't really look much like my profile picture <laughs> 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 so, 
that on um so like, like but they're gonna have a little bit of something about you and you could even maybe even give like an interesting fact about you or, you know what i mean just like a, well you just have so this is where louise you're gonna have to borrow someone's child so you just, <laughs> i can do that you can do that just go around to rachel's and get a louise in um <laughs> Just literally, if you can, because I know my friends always say that when the kids are in the background, that um, they love my little videos. They're like, oh, I love your little videos. And the kids are in the background. And um, one of my friends says, oh, you know, Max is always looking for Louie in the video. So if you've got the kids in the background as well, it would be really mean, wouldn't it? Mel, I'll just get the cat in the background. <laughs> just show the cat. Hello, my name's Louise. Would you like to join my group? <laughs> what did you say? She likes what? <laughs> well, I'll get Phoebe with her moustache, you know, and I'll just be like, hey, that's how she the question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You could. <laughs> It's going to be a bit crackers if we're, if we're brave at them, isn't it? Like, <laughs> uh, Maybe we should just start doing it to each other first to build up our confidence yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah so you could, we can do it in your Road to Ruby group, can't we, Faye? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. So you could do it in yeah. there and then we can get like a bit more confident with it in groups like that. Yeah, and then... I think so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. cool. It'll be fun. It will be fun. fun. Cool. Right then, ladies. It's yep. um, 10 o'clock, so I've been going an hour, so I don't want to keep you much longer. Because we've all got lists. Yep. lists of things to do. <laughs> yeah. I'll crack on now. I'm tempted to do video messages saying, do you want to come on the opportunity call? But then I can't send the link, can I? Mm. Send the link separate. Oh, you could send the link underneath it. Oh, send I don't the know video, then send the link. I don't know if I'm brave enough tonight. I think I might have to do that another day. <laughs> yeah. This gonna... is a good one. We'll build it up. Yeah, I'll build that one up. Get it right. We'll <laughs> Have we got the link somewhere for, for tomorrow night? Yes, I'll send it to you. I'll pop it on the page again, Dawn. Yeah, lovely. It could have been on there, but I think I've put it on there, but I'll, I'll do it again because it gets hidden, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Sorted. Lovely, thank you. All right, then. Cheers, thank ladies. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.